crafty cuties we are making a journal today let's just get right into it so first of all you are going to need signatures that will be in your journal a signature is basically a little booklet of papers and you can make this super simple if you want you can just basically take white paper and fold them in half mine are a letter sized paper so eight and a half by eleven and I just folded them in a half so they end up being eight and a half by five and a half you can make yours any size now for my signatures I put a variety of different papers so each signature is completely different which kind of makes it a smash book or junk journal so for example this one right here is just filled with watercolor paper so you'll see I have watercolor paper and I have four sheets in here. So including the cover, that's five sheets. Now on this one, there's a variety of sizes and types of paper. So you can see I use lined paper and it's just going to be like sideways. I use some strips of paper and an envelope. So you can mix and match what you put in here. So I have six signatures. I find that to be pretty good, but honestly, you don't have to have six. You can do as many as you would like. For the cover, I am using chipboard. Now I made these pieces six by nine. So they're a little bit bigger than my signatures, which I like. And the, um, the middle part here, why can I think of what this is called? Measures two and a half by 11 wait sorry no two and a half by nine now the way that i figured out what measurements to use was first the front and the back cover i obviously just made a little bit bigger than my signatures but for the middle piece here i basically just took all of my signatures and i stacked them together kind of like this and i literally just put them down like this to make sure that i would have a big enough bind, not bind. Why can I think of what this is called? Spine, that's what it's called. So first we are going to start with the cover. So as you guys saw, I basically have my signatures ready to go. Um, I do have tape here. I like to use score tape. You're going to need something to sew with, like um, something that can poke holes through all of these thick papers. I'm actually just using tacks if you have an awl or something with a poker <laughs> technical term. Um, I have a thimble just to help so I don't kill myself. And I have some embroidery thread, but you can use really any type of um, thread or string that you would like and i really can't think straight i'm going to basically do a bunch of the decorating at the very end and i just have a ton of embellishments stamps papers that match this collection and by the way i'm using the boho dreams by kaiser craft collection for most of the paper so first what you're going to do is you want to cover your chipboard pieces you can use cereal boxes as well and with the 12 by 12 pieces, I taped them down the middle. And I'm going to flip over like so, and I'm going to take my cover, and then I'm going to take the spine, and you really only want like a quarter of an inch in between these two. And then same with this right here, about a quarter of an inch, or even less really, just a little space. And we are going to adhere these down just like so, so let me add some tape. So before I flip these over and tape them down to our cover piece, this is an optional step. I am going to take some Tyvek paper. I hope I'm saying that right. It is basically an envelope that you can get. Um, I believe they sell Tyvek at like a Home Depot or something as well. Well, I'm using a piece that I have here. It does not have to be completely straight. I'm going to put this in between the chipboard and paper. So this is going to go down first and then this will go on top. Now we are going to wrap the rest of the cover around the chipboard. So I have a lot extra on each side and I'm going to trim that just to get rid of some of the bulk because I will be adding a mat of paper over this anyways. So really you just want enough to cover the edges. And I probably could have done this, planned this better and kept a lot extra, but that's okay. I'm just going and then we will trim the corners again to get rid of some of the bulk. 
and I actually learned that little trick from my friend Mel on Mel B's Paper Creations. Um, I'm just going to eyeball it like I do and basically cut a corner off like so, but you want to keep enough, if you can see that, to wrap around and so for this part, I'm actually going to use wet glue. I'm using Tombow Mono Liquid Glue, the Aqua, and I will go ahead and just put glue all around these extra sides and I will wrap them over the chipboard, just one at a time. Now that we have all of the sides glued down, you will want to carefully go ahead and bend your pages and you really need to take your time because the paper can crack. And now you can see that we have the base of our journal complete. Now we need to mark where we are going to be sewing. So let's take our signatures. So I'm starting with the very first signature and I learned how to do this technique from C Lemon on YouTube. So be sure to check her video below. I highly recommend it before you do this journal um, because she does a really great tutorial, but I will go ahead and kind of quickly give you an overview of how I will be doing this. Um, I've watched lots of her videos and I think that this book binding will be the best way to go for this. So we are going to mark half an inch in on each side. I'm just using a marker because I won't, you won't be seeing this, so that's okay. You're gonna go another half inch on each side. Then you're going to go two inches in on each side. Now you can see where all of the dots are. That's where we are going to be sewing. So to make this easy, go ahead and take the rest of your signatures. You do wanna make sure to have them in the order that you wish to have them in your books. So I have my signatures in the order that I want. I'm going to take my ruler once again, and as you can still see, I have the dots here. As my guideline, I'm going to take the ruler and I will hold it up against the first mark here so that I can have a straight line. I'm basically going to mark straight down using this as a guide, and this will mark that same spot on all of the signatures. Now I'm at kind of a weird angle, so let me try to show you this and then I will continue. And definitely use a pencil if you are not confident that you're going to get it just right. So I'm gonna move it over to the next now. And really you can just go from the bottom all the way up. So now you can see that all of our signatures have a mark and they all line up. And I am just going to take my, my actual top signature and I am basically going to mark on the cover where I want the signature to fall on the cover. So if you want a little bit extra on each side, like I'm gonna have, I want like a quarter of an inch extra down here and on top, just line it up so that it falls that way and take your marker and then we're going to mark little holes or dots, I mean, where our signature not a signature, sorry, where the dots are here. So I'm going to pause here before we get too far. I personally want to cover the inside with some scrapbook paper. So before marking the spots, I will go ahead and cover this side and then we will get back to marking our spot. So for this part, I did not measure. I'm really just estimating. So I went ahead and I marked all of the spots down the signature, all the way down the edge, and I left about a quarter of an inch. But again, I really didn't measure. I just kind of eyeballed this, and that's why I definitely suggest checking out C Lemon's tutorial or another tutorial on uh, YouTube if you wanna get a precise measurement, but this does not have to be perfect. So now that I marked all of the um, spots down the spine, we need to go across. And for this, I basically just took my ruler and I lined it up as straight as possible. And I made sure that I had six dots, one for each signature. So I have six signature, we need six dots. And I'm going to go ahead and move down to this next one. Now I do want to make sure to follow this guideline now. I do want that to be straight. And you could totally use a uh, 
ruler here as well to get this nice and straight, but just for the sake of the video, I'm going to eyeball this as well. Now that we have everything marked, we need to go ahead and poke a hole in anything that is marked. So I like to start with the signatures, and I'm basically going to start with the very top signature and make my way down. I'm going to unfold the entire signature. I recommend placing it down on something like foam or something that will be easy for your um, tool to go through. And I'm using a tack, which is totally fine, but you can use an awl, which is a book binding tool, or something like so. so I'm just gonna go down and make sure that this goes through each hole that we have marked. And I will continue this through all of the signatures. And this is the one with the watercolor paper that's really thick, and this tack goes through really well. I have all of the holes punched through the signatures. Now we will move on to our cover and just like we did with the signatures, I will go ahead, take my tack, and poke a hole on all of these dots. It is definitely a lot. So I am punching the last hole, and now it is time to go ahead and attach our signatures to the cover. And some people like to decorate their pages and signatures first. Personally, I like to get everything together, the base all sewn together and whatnot, and then decorate. So that's how I will be doing it. So we are going to start with the last signature in our stack. So I'm going to basically take these and turn them over so that they're ready to grab one after another. We are going to go ahead and thread your needle. And again, I'm using embroidery thread. Um, mine is not waxed, but I know a lot of people do recommend it to be waxed. Um, I'm just using an orange color here that I liked. And I basically threaded it through leaving a little extra here. And I also went ahead and knotted the end. So to measure how much thread you're going to need, I basically went ahead and I measured the length of my signature and I times that by six. So I just went back and forth like so, six times, so one per signature. And I did this two extra times just to have extra just in case, but you can, tie on some more if you need, um, if you run out. So don't worry too much about that. So basically we are going to start by threading through the center of our signature at the very top hole. And we are going to go in through the signature, out through the back, pulling it all the way through our end is knotted, so it won't go all the way through. And then we are going to go out to the front of the cover. It's a little hard to show because I have lots of extra here. So out the very first hole. You just want to pull that all the way through. Now we are at the outside cover, as you can see the very first hole, and we're going to go back in that same hole, and you want to leave a little loop. So I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going back in that same hole, and you wanna make sure that you are going to be going back into your uh, signature. So just leave a little loop. Now mine is super twisty, but that's okay and that's a little bit big. You just want it to be big enough. I'm going to show you that one more time and give you another option. If you're afraid that that loop is going to pull through, you can go ahead and put something in between the loop. So I'm going to use this little jump ring because I do plan to use a charm anyways. But if you don't decide to do this, you just need to be careful for the first few stitches. Um, and just make sure not to pull that loop all the way through. So I hope that made sense. So now that I have my jump ring, I'm going to go back through just like we did that first time. And this is a lot easier once you're actually doing it. Personally, I think it's a little confusing and it probably looks a little confusing because I have all this string going on inside here. Okay, so pull it all the way through 
to the inside of our signature. Make sure that it's not tangling up as you're pulling it through also. So you want to pull that pretty tight. Now we are going to sew down the second hole, out the signature, and then out through the coordinating hole on our cover here. So out here. And basically we will just continue that pattern now. Now we're going to go back in, back through this signature. Now we will go ahead to the next hole. You want to go outside and then you want to go to the next hole of the cover and go to the outside of the cover. Now we're going to repeat the same exact steps all the way up, just like we did with the first signature. Now that we are out at the very end and next to our first little loop, we are going to go ahead and loop around that loop. And if you see down at the bottom, we also created like a little loop here. So every time we reach one of the ends, we are going to loop around the prior stitch. So of course this first one didn't end up being a stitch because that was our starting point. But from here on out, we will continue with the loop that is next to the last stitch. So just go ahead. Pull all the way through. And now we are ready to move on to the third signature. And from here on out, we will basically repeat the same exact steps. So I'm going to grab the next signature. Before I go in here, I'm going to go ahead, place that down so that we have it ready. And now we just continue. We go through the top into the inside of the cover, through our signature and repeat. Always remember to loop around that previous stitch before adding on the next signature. So you'll loop around and then you will go through the very next row. Now I like to look eye level so that when I am going through the back of the cover, I can also kind of see and place where that hole is. Now we are at the very last stitch. And all we need to do to tie this off is wrap around the previous stitch, just like we have been doing. And feel free, if you want to add a charm on this side as well, you can add another little uh, open ring, jump ring. Now you're going to go back into that hole, all the way back in through our signature. Now you can just go ahead and tie it off. So I'm going to go back this through this little loop here. Go ahead and trim the end. And congrats, you just made your first journal. 
So here is what this looks like. Now I messed up somehow on this very last loop. So there shouldn't be a little loop here, but that's okay. I'll totally work with that. But this is what it looks like, minus this. And you have yourself a very cute little journal. I really hope that this was helpful to you guys. And as you can see, there is quite a bit of room in between each signature, making it great if you have a bunch of embellishments or dimensional things that you wanna put in your journal. Now, I think that it would be wonderful just like this, but like I said, I'm going to decorate mine up a bit and I will show you guys a complete flip through in a separate video. So let me know if you make a journal like this. I would love to see it on Instagram. You can tag me there. And if you want to see how this journal ended up, I do have a complete flip through video of the final project. I had a lot of fun making this. So be sure to check the link below or up in the corner.